Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this lecture, we will continue with the internal features of the hypothalamus. In the first lecture pertaining to the hypothalamus, we talk about the various hypothalamic nuclei which are located in the entro inferior part of the lateral wall of the third ventricle. Then in the second lecture, uh, we were dealing with the structures uh, which belong to the hypothalamus in the anterior part of the floor of the third ventricle. So some of these structures we discussed and remaining structures we will continue in this lecture. Now the structures which are found in the anterior part of the floor of the third ventricle, these will include optic chiasma, tuber sanarium, infundibulum. Pituitary mammillary bodies, so we finished with the optic chiasma, tuber sanarium, infundibulum, pituitary gland. Now, what about the mammillary bodies? which are also part of the hypothalamus and they are considered as part of the uh, hypothalamus and comprise of important hypothalamic nuclei. Now the <coughs> this is an optic chiasma above it is the lamina terminalis and still above the anterior commissure, then tuber sanarium, infundibulum, and pituitary gland. Behind the tuber sanarium, there are two rounded elevations, right and left mammillary bodies then still behind it is the posterior perforated substance and section through midbrain mammillary body and this is posterior perforated substance which is also partly on the basal surface of the cerebrum and in the interpedicular fossa of the midbrain posterior perforated substance
posterior commissure, pineal stalk and pineal body, the posterior wall of the third ventricle. Here, fornix. Hypothalamic sulcus. Above and behind is the thalamus. And below in front is the hypothalamus. Now, mammillary bodies, these are two bodies which are externally comprising of white matter. And internally is gray matter. Internally is the gray matter which comprises of two nuclei, medial nucleus and a lateral nucleus. Medial nucleus and there is a lateral nucleus. The medial nucleus, it forms bulk of the uh, mammary body. <coughs> now, outside is a layer of white matter, and this layer of white matter comprises of fibers of column of the fornix. The fibers located externally in each memory body uh, belong to the column of fornix and most of the fibers of column of fornix these uh, terminate in the medial uh, in the nuclei of the mammillary body so this is a section through mammillary body Now, mammillary body being uh, located uh, between limbic system and thalamus. So, mammillary body acts as a relay station. between limbic system and thalamus. So this is why it has an important role in memory formation. So what is function mainly? It is formation of memory. Previously it was thought that the memory bodies are concerned with the sense of smell, olfaction. Rhinocephalon. But nowadays its main function is memory formation as it acts as a relay station uh, between limbic system and thalamus. But uh, its uh, functions are to some extent influenced by the sense of smell also. Still some extent of uh, sense of smell affect the functions of the memory body. Memory bodies are one of the major outflows from hypothalamus. Now it's uh, uh, connections
This is Thalamus. And this is a hypothalamus. right and left mammary bodies. I have drawn one mammary body. Mammary body comprising of a medial nucleus. Comparatively smaller lateral nucleus, mammary body. Brain, below the midbrain is the pons, then the metal obligator, brainstem parts, cerebral cortex, from the medial nucleus of the memory body. A bundle of nerve fibers arise. Now these bundle of fibers divide into two tracts. A medial nucleus of the memory body, a bundle of nerve fibers arise which you divide into memelothalamic tract. And memelotegmental tract. Now, memelothalamic tract Enter the thalamus and lay in the anterior nucleus of the thalamus. So 
So these are fibers of the mammalothalamic tract. Then from the mammalothalamic tract, which relay in the uh, anterior nucleus of the thalamus, from the anterior nucleus of the thalamus, again nerve fibers arise, which relay in the cerebral cortex. These are thalamocortical fibers. This is cerebral cortex. So from the medial nucleus of mammillary body, a bundle of nerve fibers arise which bifurcate into two major tracts, the mammalothalamic tract and the mammalotegmental tract. The mammalothalamic tract relay in the anterior nucleus of the thalamus and from the anterior nucleus of thalamus, thalamocortical fibers arise which relay in the cerebral cortex. Now, the other bundle of nerve fibers which arise from it pass through the, descend and pass through the brain stem in the form of memelotegmental tract. It descends to the tegmentum of the brain stem. Now, this is a posterior part of the midbrain, pons, and metal allocator. Brain stem. So, the memolo tegmental, tegmental tract arising from the medial nucleus of the mammary body descend through the tegmentum of the midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata. This tract is known as the mammalotegmental tract. Then from the tegmentum bundle of nerve fibers arise which ascend and relay in the lateral nucleus of the mammillary body. Relay in the lateral nucleus of mammillary body. So these are uh, some of the uh, connections of the uh, mammillary body. So this was the internal structure of the mammillary body, which is one of the important part of the um, hypothalamus. <coughs> Next uh, part of the hypothalamus is posterior perforated substance. Now posterior perforated substance is a layer of nervous tissue which is partly on the basal surface of the cerebrum 
and partly in the floor of the interpedicular fossa. You know the midbrain has to cross cerebri anteriorly. Cross cerebri, right and left, and in between these two, there is interpedicular fossa. Inter pedicular fossa. So it is here in the floor of the interpedicular fossa at the anterior surface of the midbrain. So the posterior perforated substance partly lies on the basal surface of the cerebrum and extends downward to continue into the floor of the interpedicular fossa, which is uh, uh, the fossa is between the diverging right and left crest cerebri on the anterior aspect of the um, midbrain. Now posterior perforated substance part of the hypothalamus located in the interior part of the floor of the third ventricle. So it is a layer of brain tissue which have several perforations and through these perforations uh, central branches of uh, middle cerebral arteries they enter the brain to supply the nuclei inside. The uh, central branches of anterior cerebral artery, they perforate through the anterior perforated substance, which is located on the orbital surface of cerebral hemisphere, just distal to the um, olfactory tract. And this is posterior perforated substance, and the central branches of posterior cerebral artery, it, uh, uh, central branches of Sorry, not middle, posterior cerebral arteries, they enter. <coughs> and location, I told you, partly on the basal surface of cerebrum and in the party in the interpedicular fossa. of the midbrain anteriorly. The interpedicular, the posterior perforation that contain a nucleus called interpedicular nucleus. The posterior perforated substance is occupied by interpedicular nucleus. Now, this nucleus has uh, also have some connections. Chiasma Tuberosinarium pituitary gland Membrane 
memory body. There is a posterior perforated substance. which continue into the midbrain. Geta. Posterior perforated substance. Now it has a nucleus embedded inside. This is interpedicular nucleus. Oh, carpus callosum. Commissor Lemina Terminalis, pineal stalk, pineal body attached to the posterior wall of the third ventricle, and this is posterior commissure. Fornix. Septum pellucidum. Hypothalamic sulcus. Lateral wall of the third ventricle. Now here is a habinular nucleus. are the connections of the uh, interpedicular uh, uh, nucleus. Uh, it is connected with the habinural nucleus by fasciculus retroflexus. Vesiculus retroflexes a tract connecting the uh, habinular nucleus with the interpendicular nucleus of posterior perforated substance. Then uh, from the interpendicular nucleus unspecified olfactory pathway extends.
unsatisfied, unspecified. Exactly in detail we do not know, but it is said that the interparticular nucleus, from the interparticular nucleus, and unspecified olfactory pathway extend downward to the uh, uh, brain stem. Now this uh, this was about the posterior perforated substance. So in this lecture we finished with the structures in the entire part of the floor of the third ventricle which are believed to be part of the hypothalamus. That is, we finished with the internal features of the optic chiasma, tubers, anarium, infundibulum, pituitary, especially pars nervosa, or neurohypophysis. Then we discussed with the internal features of the mammary body, then the posterior perforated substance. Now, next part of the brain, which also is considered as part of the hypothalamus. Structures in the posterior part of the floor of the third ventricle. In the structure in the posterior part of floor of third ventricle. So the structure in the posterior part of the floor of the third ventricle, it is known as subthalamic tegmental region. Subthalamic tegmental uh, region. Thalamus in hypothalamus by cerebral aqueduct Sinarium and pituitary gland. And optic 
miasma, lamina terminalis, anterior perforated substance. Midbrain, if you cut a section through the midbrain, there is substantia nigra. Behind the crust cerebri, Above at the level of superior curriculus is the red nucleus located in the upper part of the midbrain. This is that level with the superior colliculus, red nucleus. So some internal features of the midbrain. So the subthalamic tegmental region. The subthalamic tegmental region is the continuation of tegmentum of the midbrain. that the posterior part of the brainstem is known as the tegmentum. Tegmentum of brainstem. So the upward continuation of the tegmentum of the brainstem located between the thalamus above, below the level of thalamus, located, thalamus is located above and above the level of red nucleus and substantia nigra. This is a red nucleus of midbrain and this is substantia nigra. So this part of the tegmentum of the midbrain, the highest part, which is located between the thalamus above and below up to the level of substantia nigra and red nucleus of the midbrain. This part is known as the subthalamic tegmental region. This is part of the hypothalamus.
Now, what is the structure of the subthalamic tegmental region? It is a layered structure. is the thalamus then below here is the substance and nigra rare nucleus of midbrain this is the subthalamic tegmental region so this region is divided into various uh, layers the structures are located in various layers so first of all there is a layer of nerve fibers layer of nerve fibers just below the lateral part of the thalamus this is known as the florals field H1 Lorenz field H1 it comprises of nerve fibers field one. Now here three tracts. Ansa lenticularis. Fasciculus lenticularis. Number three, dento rubro thalamic. Dento rubro thalamic tracts. All these three tracts they meet. Three texts meet to form thalamic fasciculus. Another common tract known as the thalamic fasciculus. So, what is the structure of this layer of nerve fibers located below the thalamus? It is known as florals field H1. It comprises of nerve fibers only. And nerve fibers belong to three tracts, ensile anticorase, 
fasciculus lenticularis and dentorubrothalamic fasciculus are tracked. These join together to form one common tract known as the tha thalamic uh, fasciculus. This was Floral's field one. Next, there is a layer of gray matter. There is a layer of gray matter, and below the this layer of gray matter is again there is a layer of nerve fibers. This is called floral, floral field H two. Again, comprising of nerve fibers. Floral's field mm, H2 comprise of nerve fibers, and there is a tract here, here fasciculus lenticularis. This layer of gray matter is known as zona inserta. So just below the bundle of nerve fibers called floral's field H1 is a layer of gray matter known as the zona inserta. And below the zona inserta, again, there is a layer of nerve fibers known as the floral's field H2. And this H2 field comprise of uh, fasciculus lenticularis uh, fibers. <coughs> then next, there is other layer of nerve fibers this is known as floral's field H H, florals field H. So just to differentiate, this is floral field H1 and um, above the zona inserta and below the zona inserta again a uh, layer of nerve fibers, this is called florals fields H2 and below it again there is a bundle of nerve fibers uh, known as the floral fields H. Again comprise of only nerve fibers. And below this uh, floral's field H is the nucleus, a biconvex nucleus, subthalamic nucleus.
subthalamic nucleus. This is subthalamic tegmental region, a region comprising of various structures which are arranged in layers in descending order. Subthalamic tegmental region. is also part of the hypothalamus. Now this subthalamic uh, nucleus, which is in the subthalamic tegmental region, this is uh, an important part of parasympathetic. nervous system. Belong to the parasympathetic nervous system. So in this way we finished with the hypothalamus and comprising of uh, three major parts that is different hypothalamic nuclei located in the intro inferior part of the lateral wall of the third ventricle. Then we talk about the uh, structures found in the anterior part of the floor of the third ventricle which also belong to the hypothalamus. Uh, and uh, lastly we discuss the structures located in the posterior part of the floor of the third ventricle which also belong to the, the hypothalamus. In this way we finished with the internal features of the hypothalamus. And in the next uh, lecture we will talk about the different connections of the hypothalamus, then functions of the hypothalamus and applied aspects of the hypothalamus. Thank you very much.